Today we're going to talk about the physical setup of the EG2 engraver. We're going to install it in the accessory mount and note that the micrometer dial is set at zero. This can um, thread up right up against the surface but you have to be careful to leave some room so it doesn't bind up the shaft. So we've removed the uh, router and the uh, two router clamps and we just drop it into the accessory mount and note that it can rock around a little bit make sure that it's nice and square and snug down the clamp make sure that the slide is free to move up and down and then we just install the AC connector in its plug and that's the basic setup now we're going to set X and Y zero and Z zero First thing we're going to do is set our Z0. I'm going to hit the 3 key until the plastic nose touches the top surface of our plate. And I stopped, I released the 3 key and now I'm using the mouse wheel to get it exactly on the surface. And I can see on the surface when there appears to be a gap. Now this does not set the depth of uh, how deep it goes into your material. It's a totally separate instance. So I'm going to hit Z once, twice, and I get a pop-up that says reset Z0. I acknowledge that, and now our Z0 is set. I've got my cut depth set at minus 0.05. And that is not how deep it goes into the material. That's how deep the Z-axis moves when it's cutting. So I'm going to move it down by 50 thousandths. And you can see there's a gap of 50 thousandths here. So that allows that nose to ride on the surface and follow any irregularities. I'm going to move it to retract level. And now I'm going to set the X and Y work zero. I'm going to set them independently. So what I'm going to do is use the quarter inch diameter nose and touch the edge to determine the X axis. Uh, the work zero should be at this corner uh, of the material. So I've moved it rapidly with the uh, four key and I'm switching to the um, mouse wheel. I'm changing to the Z axis, moving down and looking at the edge so I can see when there's a gap. I'm switching to the X axis and now it is just exactly touching. Now I'm going to hit the X key. It brings up the X axis control and since we're in the engraved mode, it uh, nominates minus 0.125 as the coordinate. So I'm going to click set as listed. So now my X work zero is set. I'm going to hit the seven key to move it to the retract position. Now I'm going to go to the Y axis and repeat the same thing. I'm going to back it away from that edge a little bit, change to the Z axis. Make sure you have plenty of light so you can see. And now the edge of that uh, nose is just touching the bottom of the Y axis. So I hit Y to bring up the Y control. And it says minus 0.125. And I'm going to click set as listed. Now if I hit the 7 key to go to retract position, click move, MV icon, and move to zero, 0, the center of the nose should be at the corner of the material. Okay, that is the physical setup of the engraver itself. We're now going to set up the cutter. The cutter is a six and a half inch long by 11 64ths cutter, has a brass left hand thread nut on the top, and it says 0 0.015 FLX. That 0 0.015 is the, the width of the tip, and the FLX indicates that it's uh, ground for uh, cutting through paint and plastics. 
The procedure is we're going to put this in the machine with this nut loose and then uh, this is going to be below the uh, plastic foot and we're going to drop this down on top of that with the plastic nut also on top so that makes the tip of this exactly flush with the end of the nut. We'll loosen the uh, nut and make sure that it slides nice and smooth along the shaft so you can feel when it's touching. I'm going to jog to a position somewhere that it's clear and I am going to uh, move the z-axis down. <clears throat> now you have to be a little bit careful not to go too far because you've only got about three sixteenths of travel on on this. Now you can just uh, snug this up just a little bit so it doesn't drop down unexpectedly and chip the nose. And I'm just turning this in. No tools are needed uh, for this, just finger tight is all you need. So now this needs to be compressed enough so you have access to the uh, set screw. So we'll set the set screw loose and I can feel a definite touch. If there's any binding, the binding has to be relieved. If there's any burrs inside there or corrosion or anything like that, that has to be taken care of before you can do this step. This has to slide nice and smooth and you need to be able to feel when it's touching this feeler gauge. The thickness of that feeler gauge is irrelevant. It just gives us a hard surface so we get an accurate setting. So now our uh, zero is set on the micrometer and we have uh, tightened up the nut. So now the cutter is adjusted. I'm going to move, hit the seven key to move to retract. In AvCam, we've got the file loaded. This is our end number. We're not going to cut this outside. I'll turn this layer off in a little bit. You can see that our work zero is at the lower left hand corner. We've already set that. And we've got the engrave mode. And let's go ahead and turn off that layer right now. We're going to use the online layer. We'll talk about the CAD aspects of this in a another video, but in this case, the online layer is just going to cause the toolpath to follow the outline of the letter. These letters are three-eighths of an inch tall in a Times New Roman font. For settings, we need to set the cutter size. Our cutter size is 15 thousandths. And so let's simulate that. And so that tells us how the uh, engraving is going to look. So now that AvCam is set up, we're uh, just about ready to cut. The depth of cut is actually set with this micrometer. It adjusts how far the cutter sticks out of this plastic nose. So if we set this to five thousandths, for instance, it may be too deep, too shallow, if you don't know, start shallow. If you have an engraving plastic, the manufacturer will tell you how deep that top coat is. If you've painted, a paint thickness gauge is a good thing to have. If you don't have that, you'll just have to experiment in an area that won't show, preferably a just a blank piece like this, uh, so that you can uh, uh, see how deep the engraving needs to be. I set this at three thousandths, and let's just see once what happens. I'm just going to hit C for cut, and uh, note that I do have the um, coolant turned on. The coolant will flush away the chips so the chips don't get caught underneath the uh, plastic nose. So I hit C for cut, and it tells me starting position does not start at zero, zero. That's fine. I know that I've set it.
this looks pretty good although I can see there's just a tiny tiny little bit of the end that isn't cut all the way through you can actually put the micrometer halfway between stops but I'm going to move it a full thousand and see once where we how we get After setting it one thousandth of an inch deeper, I can see we've got a nice cut. It's all the way through the black and not through the white. This happens to be powder coat, and powder coat is generally fairly thick. If you use a non-powder coat paint, it may be thinner. Something like Cerakote or something like that may be only about a thousandth of an inch thick. So. You may, if you're just experimenting, start with zero, actually, and uh, see once uh, how deep it is. You can always go back over it and cut it deeper. Once it's cut too deep, you're basically looking at stripping it and starting over. Thank you for watching.